Welcome back to Fox and Friends. Well, President Biden says he's working with the Taliban to evacuate American citizens safely out of Afghanistan. But his claims are vastly different from the information coming out of Kabul, including reports of some Americans being beaten and harassed. So what's it really like to negotiate with the Taliban? Well, let's ask our next, next guest. He's been to Doha, Qatar, twice to negotiate with a Taliban leader. Adam Bowler joins me now. Adam, what is it like to negotiate with the Taliban? I mean, you're negotiating with a militia, right, a terrorist group. And so there's two sides to them. I think first, uh, they are a relatively disciplined uh, group, and so you can have discussions back and forth. The other thing I'll say is, you know, we talk about the Tal Taliban here. We may be giving them too much credit. They're not particularly sophisticated. So uh, one of the things, there, there's a guy with a, a larger beard was either sniffing or eating his beard during the talk. Uh, wow. There was someone else that um, during the bilateral discussion uh, was picking his nose and kind of put his hand over while he was doing it. Uh, <laughs> you can still tell. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, Taliban is a militia and they're, they're relatively tribal. But I mean, you can have discussions with them. It's interesting. Our last president wrote The Art of the Deal. Uh, many of his adversaries, people who had to deal with him and make deals with him, said that they, they, they liked that he came out of a business um, background, that you know he was unpredictable. So he's kind of a tough negotiator. How do you think that President Biden measures up in, in the same circumstance? What kind of a negotiator do you predict he would be or is being with the Taliban right now? So my concern with what we're seeing right now is that when you negotiate with a militia, you need to have the muscle behind you too. And mm -hmm. one of the, I think when we were negotiating with the Taliban, uh, it was right after Soleimani, it was right after taking action in the Middle East, and in that region, strength is respected. Uh, mm -hmm. And so my concern right now is diplomacy is fine, but diplomacy without strength and follow through doesn't work with a terrorist group. Yeah, there definitely there's a lot of weakness, um, even leading up to this event. Um, and some people say that this whole operation was botched because there was an artificial deadline that, um, you know, President Biden and his team wanted to have this great talking point, these bragging rights to say on 9-11, you know, we're out of Afghanistan and that this was sort of rushed. Um, and, and, and that's why this happened the way it did. Um, I don't know if you agree or not, but what do you think about what has happened as we go into 9-11? What's the message there? I think the United States always needs to operate from a position of strength. Um, and so we had the opportunity here to execute this well, not to execute with our tail between our legs. So I think there's bipartisan view here that the United States can't spend 20 more years in Afghanistan. Everybody agrees. The key is how do you execute on that and how do you depart with strength? Uh, and now what you're seeing, you know, <laughs> the, the situation on the ground now where uh, folks are worried about an Al-Qaeda attack, because Al-Qaeda is still in Afghanistan uh, around the gates, and that's why they're pushing people back. Uh, I, I, think, I think it's time to, to show some strength and to make sure we get our people yeah. out. And I don't think it's too late. Yeah, well, that's interesting, I, and, and hopefully it's not. I think Americans agree. Um, a lot of Americans wanted to get out, but they wanted to do it on our terms and, and without a national humiliation. Um, thank you so much, Adam. Really appreciate it. Always happy to be Great here. Great perspective.